Hello, Vol Nation. Welcome to another episode of Believe in Tennessee Football. I'm your host, as always, Kyler Kerbison, joined with Reed Bacon. I uh, got a good one today. We're talking recruiting, talking some of the new commits we have. Uh, I give you my breakdown on the two offensive line commits and who I actually think is better than the other, uh, and give you some recruiting stories of you know a visit to Florida I had and a visit to Bama I had and why I ended up going Tennessee. So uh, let's jump into it. By the game, snap, the kick is in the air, and the kick this time is no, sir, Reed. No, sir, Reed. Final score, Tennessee 20, Florida 17. Pandemonium reigns. Loads up. Fires long for the end zone. The pass is going to be caught on Tennessee. Tennessee wins! Caught it by Tennessee. Jawan Jennings. Jennings makes the catch in the end zone on the Hail Mary. Down at the 35, to the 40, to the 45, to the 50, to the 45, to the 40, to the 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. What did he do? All he did was score. Joey Pitt. Touchdown on play number one. So before we get into the show, gotta shout out our number one sponsor at Bet Online. You know, baseball is coming up. Uh, you also have the NHL playoffs, NBA playoffs, and there's just a ton of stuff to bet on. So for all of your news, your stats, all the odds that you would want, Bet Online has that. So go on, head over there, and uh, you know, get in on that action. It's it's fun to bet on these games. It gets a little more interesting that way. Um, so visit the website or use your mobile device to sign up and receive a 50% uh, welcome bonus on your first deposit. So before the next tip-off, face-off, or pitch, head on over to Bet Online and start playing today. Bet Online, your online sportsbook experts. All right, welcome in everybody. Uh, another episode here, and uh, today we're going to be talking recruiting. Uh, we're going to talk to the new guys that committed to us, uh, what we saw out of them, and also some recruiting stories from my past. But uh, first, how we doing, Reed? How was uh, uh, how's your weekend gone? Good, good weekend so far. Just hanging out. Had a nice little uh, church service this morning, so that was good. I had a little bacon and eggs. And now I'm ready to talk shop, talk ball with you. How was your weekend? You had a you had a big weekend this weekend because. Uh, a little birthday action, a little anniversary action. Yes, yes. Birthday was last Wednesday. Uh, anniversary was past Friday. So I never forget the anniversary because it's right next to my birthday. Um, but yeah, I had a good weekend hanging out with the wife, celebrating five years, which is kind of crazy to say now. Uh, a lot of people don't even expect it because I just turned 28. They definitely do not expect me to be five years into a marriage, but, um, yeah, I've always been that kind of guy, just committed. I'll stay yeah. <laughs> with what I got. So committed, co- committed, uh, to Miss Gerberson and committed to the UT Vols. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> You're a dedicated guy. That's right. Um, so yeah, it's been a good weekend. Uh, had a good time. Went to, uh, some Korean restaurant, which was very good. Uh, had some Korean barbecue, so happy, uh, happy we've made it to five years and look yeah. forward to more and more. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, no, <clears throat> first off, uh, congratulations to you all. It really is impressive as <clears throat> at our age, you know, you know, and I'm not married yet. I hopefully, hopefully soon, sooner rather than later. Um, I definitely believe I found that person, which is great, but you know, getting married at 23 and, and, and making it and, and, and just continually through that, it's, it's been awesome and impressive to see. Yeah. So go I ahead. That. Yeah. Go ahead. Believe we can also run your uh, marriage counseling and uh, <laughs> you know, your uh, whatever else you need us to run for your other podcast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We'll but no, it. really, but, but really it's, it is impressive and it's something I'm, I'm proud of you all for. So. Appreciate that, bud. Um, so, I guess we can jump into the commits that have happened recently. 
Who was the last guy? We uh, Phillips was the last guy we talked about last week. Um, so since then, there's been a couple offensive linemen, a couple skill guys. So I know you looked at the skill guys. What did you see out of them? Yeah, I, I starting with Squirrel White. I love Squirrel. Um, funny thing is, so I was at work this week. Obviously, UT fans there. I heard one of the guys say, "Oh, great!" You know, sarcastically, we got another three star wide receiver guy you know, it was tiny or whatever. He made a comment about how small he was. And so I was like, all right, let me go check this out. So when I had time, I, I looked, and of course I looked at the offer list. I'm like, wait, hold on now. And I'm like, this is a good offer list. I'm like, let me, let me check out his, let me check out his film. So I watched his film and after watching his film and looking at his, at his, uh, at his offer list, I was like, dude, I like this guy a lot. Like, I, I liked him. I, I, so let me start with the film. The reason I like the film is the one that I saw started out with a kickoff return. Okay, I love to see that. Like, made some good moves, read his blocks. Guess what? Speed kills, and he took off. Okay, so that's awesome. Then I see one of his next scenes is a jump ball for a guy that is, you know, listed at 5'11", so maybe 5'10", 5'11". It was a jump ball, and he went up and made a great play on the ball and continued on. I mean, it was like it was like a jump ball. He went up, got it, and still took off for another, like, 30, 40 yards. I'm like, okay. So he's got the jump ball. He's got the run after the catch. Then I see some a couple that were, like, deep, slant, tight, short pose, just kind of like, hey, we – you know, it's kind of like in between. It's like, hey, don't run a slant because we need to get you in the end zone here, but it's not a deep post where you're going towards the – uh, you know, um, um, field goal post or whatever, you know, it's just, Hey, get to, get to the end zone, get to the, get to the front line. Let's make something happen. And he goes up and he had a good range, like goes up, catches with his hands really well. He has a good, like wide catch radius for someone his size. Obviously he didn't care to go across the middle. And if he was going to get hit, he was going to get hit. Um, I just felt like he wasn't a one trick pony at all. And like, I felt like, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say the kid was running great routes. I, I couldn't watch that good a film on it. Like, you know, it's, it's not like I have actual game film. and um, But, like, I just was happy to see that he can make plays in the open field. He can make plays in the air. He could run a multitude of different routes. And he wasn't just like uh, – sometimes I get really nervous when I see recruits and they're like, wow, this guy's 6'3 and – 200 and something pounds and he looks like a freak and then everything you see is just deep ball, deep ball, deep ball, deep ball, deep ball. And it's like, yeah, like that's still impressive over the shoulder catches, having to play different stuff like that. Like that's still impressive and stuff like that. Um, but you know, I, I love to see someone who can go up and get a ball or catch and wiggle and take off. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I agree. And I think one of the hardest things for a wide receiver is high pointing the ball. Like, getting it at its highest point is very difficult just judging wise. Um, And it's so important when you have a DB who has good coverage on you and winning those 50, 50 balls. And like, that's something like Callaway was just unbelievable at. Yeah. And, you know, made it to where like, it didn't seem like 50, 50 anymore. It seemed like 80, 20, like he's going to be able to go up and get it. Um, But I like what you said. I like there's a return on there. I uh, love guys that can also return the ball um, and be able to set up their blocks because that's a difficult aspect of the game too is understanding how the blocks are going to be had in front of you, seeing the open field, good vision, uh, all that kind of stuff. And it's it's not it's not an easy task to be a returner. So when you have no, good no. returners like that, it's it is huge for the team. Like it makes it makes things easier overall. Uh, it's a huge, like, big play moment that can happen and give you momentum. I mean, bro, when I was there, I, I had a good, a lot of good returners, you know, Cordero Patterson to start with. Um, and then my later years in Cam Sutton and Alvin and, and Evan Berry. I mean, those guys were freaks. And it was like, yes, I don't have to go 15 play drive. I can just go on extra point. And we just got seven points. Like, it was, it was the best feeling in the world. But, um, I think that's a very undervalued part of the game, which is like, it's great to see out of them. 
No, uh, 100% agree. I mean, listen, we both played. We didn't want to be on special teams, but we were. And, like, it's one of those things that it doesn't get the publicity that offensive defense does, which which rightfully so. It's But it's so important. If you have a really good kicker, you have a really good punter, and you have a really good return specialist, it, it really can change games. Now, I feel like some of that isn't as important now in, in, in college and even going into the NFL where it's just high-flying, 30, 40 points a game compared to how our Tennessee Titans, you know, used to like to play a couple years ago where it's field position. And, and even looking at the stats on, on – in any football, whether it's high school, college, or pro, like when a team starts at their own 18 compared to their own 27, like the chances of scoring are astronomically greater. So yeah. it does like – it does matter. But I just – you know – I just really like this kid. I mean, ultimately, in a recruit, it doesn't matter how big you are. It doesn't matter how fast you are. It doesn't matter, you know, uh, some of those things. It's can you just play ball? And, like, and I and I know last week someone would say, like, I'm being hypocritical because I was saying Kane Salter's smaller guy and stuff like that. I said that just made me a little bit nervous. I said that just made me a little bit nervous, like, because he wasn't a big guy. I don't know how durable he was going to be. But, hey, like, if you can, if you can play, you can play. Like yeah. I love, I love Slim Reaper, Devontae Smith. Like, I mean, Buddy looks like he, you know, is like a twelve-year-old. But I mean, he was, he was, he was arguably the best receiver in college football this year. And, um, and you know, if you're durable, it doesn't matter. I mean, I know plenty of guys that look big. They're Jack, got the physiques. They're this, that, and the other, and they're hurt every other week. You know, yeah. so it's just like if you're durable, like I don't really care how big you are. Um, so I'm not necessarily worried about that. I'm definitely not necessarily worried about it at receiver. And um, like I said, I was just very happy to see that I felt like he was return. He could be a return specialist. He could be a possession guy. He could be a yak guy, and he could be a go up and get a guy. If you got all those in one, you know, hopefully one of those traits will really shine at the next level. I mean, yeah. I doubt that he'll do all of them very well, but hey, if you can do one or two of those, and you're gonna, you're going to do well for yourself. Yeah, so com- and, a complete and, game. Right, exactly. And lastly, I love it, man. He's from Alabama, and he has he has offers from Bama, Auburn, FSU, Kentucky, Ole Miss, Missouri. Like, dude, if we can keep this guy, like, and he continues to project well, like, I think it's a good get. I really, really do. I, I'm, I'm pumped about this guy. Yeah. So um, I will translate that into you real quick. I will talk about uh, Maurice, L.A., L.A., Los Angeles Clipper. Um, <laughs> I, listen, for me, he's a three-star. He's from Georgia. He's got a Bama offer. He's got a Georgia offer. He's got 17 or 18 other offers, 6'4", 305. I haven't watched any of the film yet, but just on those quick things, I like it. Now, to you, since this is your specialty, I want to hear what you have to say about him and about uh, Messiah Reddick. Yeah, so watch film on both of them. With with Clipper, I do like the fact that he's very he's a very lanky individual. Like you can see his body type. He's long legs, long arms, short torso, which is good for an offensive lineman. That's not what I have. I actually have the worst with a long torso, short arms, short legs. Um, so I love his length. Sometimes he doesn't use it all the way to you know his maximum possibility using all of his length but that's something in offensive linemen especially high school offensive linemen that no one is really there to teach them technique like no one is really there to teach them hand placement um you know their base where their footwork is on all different types of plays because you're using different footwork on different plays and it only comes in college once you actually start to learn technique and learn what's going on and how it can help you that you flourish. So it is hard for me to hype or, you know, harp on technique in a high school offensive lineman. But there was some technique issues with him. Um, what I wanted to see the most is his aggression. You know, was he getting after dudes? Was he road grading guys? Was he you know, finishing after the whistle, that kind of stuff. Um, and, you know, his his ability to move. So does he have pull plays? Is he getting out in space? Is there screens? Is there stuff like that that you can see where it's like, oh, he has some athleticism to him, he can move. I didn't really see a lot of that. There wasn't a lot of plays where I saw him out in space 
there wasn't plays where I was like, oh, he's being nasty. You know what I mean? Like he is really taking it to these kids. Like he does not give a crap who they are in front of him. He's putting them in the dirt. I didn't really see that aggression out of him. Um, what I like, I wanted to, I mean, he definitely had pancakes on his film and stuff like that, but I feel like there's more there. Um, and I think right now it, it, it's not a bad commit in any way. It's not a bad recruit in any way. He's great size, going to be a good player, can learn technique, can learn to be a little bit meaner. Um, and he'll be fine. He'll be a good player for us. And I think he'll probably play guard if I had to guess. Um, you know, being 6'4", he was 275 his this past season. He's now listed around 300, 305. So it looks like he's putting on some weight, which is good. Um, but I don't see him necessarily as a tackle in the SEC. But I, I think he can be a very good guard for us um, and be able to fill a role where we would need him. But uh, like I said, I'm not going to be upset that he comes here. I'm not going to say that he's a bad player at all. There's just certain things I wish I saw more of on his film. Understood. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, let's hear about, let's hear about good old Messiah. Let's see what he says. So, Messiah, yeah. So Messiah, that's the thing too, is like I just said, like I'm not necessarily looking at technique. I'm looking at his aggression and man, I, he really wants to kill dudes. Like he gets after it on film. He's putting people in the dirt every other play. Uh, there's there's plenty of plays where he's pushing guys out of screen. Like it's not even going to be involved in the play anymore, yet he still wants to dump them. That's the kind of stuff I love to see because as an offensive lineman, you're looking to punish that guy across from you. That's, you know, that is your job throughout the game. So say it, it's not going to affect the play if I pancake this guy or not. Like he's not going get to get in on the ball, whatever, but it'll affect him. It'll affect his psyche. It'll well, and affect... also later in the game. Yeah. 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 I mean, he's going to be tired of getting road graded by you and want nothing to do with you. So all those things matter. Uh, he also had good they, – they ran counter plays a lot where he's from a ta right tackle position. He's pulling around and getting to a linebacker. And you can see his athleticism, like a nice skip pull – He's able to turn the corner well, get up on the linebacker, lower his base. It's like, oh, yeah, okay. Like, I can see that athleticism in it. I can see his his movement of his feet. He's not tripping over himself. He's not falling. He's not, you know, getting tripped up by another offensive lineman when he's coming around. It's those kind of things. Like, you never want to see a guy who's on the ground a lot. Like, that. that's a, a sign of, like, are you, like, why are you on the ground? Are you not athletic right. enough to stay up? So, you know, his athleticism, I saw even on screens, uh, on those pulling plays, like I really enjoyed it. And, you know, looking at his offer list, it's Ball State, Utah State, West Virginia, Arkansas State. Like it's not big name teams. His biggest one besides us is Old Miss. But I, I almost enjoyed his film and thought more highly of him than I did Clipper. And I guess, I, I mean, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just like the hype behind Clipper. I don't know if, you know, he's gone to some camps in front of these other teams that, that Reddick hasn't, but for my money, I, I, I like Reddick more than I do Clipper. Well, it's funny. Cause I was sitting here about to ask you, Hey, why do you maybe think, the you know in this recruiting stuff um in, in evaluation in general evaluation in life i mean i don't care if it's sports or whatever whenever you're trying to evaluate someone technically before they do something you know it can be tough i mean in my job i have to hire people all the time and it's like sometimes i can think they're gonna be great and they're terrible and vice versa and then other ones i'm lukewarm about and you know sometimes they're great sometimes they're not it's just it's just the human element so wild but the only thing I can think of is like you said, like maybe with Reddick being from any from Detroit, he's from Michigan. Yep. So like maybe up there, like it's not as covered 
you know, as it is in the South. Maybe he hasn't been to as many camps. Maybe they don't, you know, he's 6'3", 278 compared to 6'4", 305. 6'4", 305 on paper sounds like he can walk out tomorrow and, and start playing on SEC gridiron. 6'3", 278. Uh, you might say, hey, I'd want him to put on, you know, 10 pounds here or there. So maybe it's that. Maybe it's his this, the physicality, you know. Maybe it's just that certain people, you know, um, maybe it's just certain people just haven't seen him yet. Um, but listen, I'll trust you. I will. I am going to go back and watch both of their highlights today because now I'm interested in it. Yeah. Um, you know, and kind of see. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you know what? We never know. We never know until they get here. Until they play, they put on the pads. So, um, you know, I guess we'll, we'll see from there. Uh, yeah, because, I, I mean, honestly, it could be just like what coaches saw in it, the eye test, like not necessarily film because, dude, sometimes these guys are putting their own film together and they pick the dumbest plays or they don't pick plays that they have that are really good and put them on there. So sometimes it's like, well, I have no idea if this is their best play. This is what they might think is their best play. But if there's another play that, you know, they don't even think highly of that is adamant that it shows me exactly who they are as a player, they don't even put on their film. So maybe it is better to get them in front of you, see them at a camp, all that kind of stuff. And this guy's, you know, Clippers uh, from Georgia, right? So. Right. He's all through the Southeast. He's going to every single camp he can down here. You know, being from Michigan, he's probably trying. And if if he hasn't gotten the Michigan offer, then maybe all the other teams are like, eh. Like, we're not going to we'll wait. Yeah, right. we'll wait. We'll wait until that Michigan offer comes, and then maybe we'll look at him um, being that, you know, home, that state offer. But Yeah, yeah. Well, let me ask you this. Did you put your highlight tape together? Uh, I actually, I didn't, I had, uh, I had my older stepbrother at the time, Anthony, he put it together and he understood football. He played all through high school and knew football and understood, okay, these are the plays that are good for you. These are the plays that show that you're, you know, doing what you need to do out there. Well, so, and yeah, and I know Anthony, Anthony's a good dude. Um, and so, yeah, he would be someone who's trustworthy. But, like, I always go back to think of our buddy Tyler Williamson. Like, I don't think Tyler put his highlight film together. I forget who did it. And it was like, it wasn't, it wasn't, they didn't, like, his one of his best plays or one of his best hits is literally, like, at the very end. Yeah. And it's like, these coaches aren't going to see that type of stuff. I mean, these coaches legitimately watch for the first 30 to 30 seconds, 45 seconds to a minute. And they're probably going on. And then when I worked in the recruiting office um, under Butch Jones, I was only there for a short time. But, like, we're not in in the recruiting office, like the interns and all those people. We're sitting there, and all we're doing is looking at rivals and, like, you know, 24-7. We're seeing who's updated, who's getting the new rankings, who's getting the new offers. We're looking at the top 100 every year. And then we're trying to just – we don't break down film or anything. We just try to get the film ready for the coaches to – rapid fire and watching stuff and so um you know coaches are humans too these people that do um the 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 evaluations are you know humans too so we all make mistakes so it's you know i could be a guy you know that that worked for rivals well yeah i could go and watch uh a maurice clipper you know and 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 really like him and think super highly of him so then what i'm the one that gives him the four star rate you know what i mean yeah so it's like it's I was talking to someone last night. The only ones that I legitimately like would get super excited about and care about when it comes to recruiting are like the blue chip, like five stars, like five, like there's five stars and then there's five, five stars. There's like, they, they, they're, they're probably can't miss. Like they're the number one receiver in the nation, the number one lineman in the nation, the number one, what, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, you know, so it's like, the the that they're probably going to, you know, turn out to be really, really good. Hey, um, and uh, and just to mention, you remind me of it, the defensive lineman from Walter, Nolan. Uh, Walter yeah. Nolan were in his top five. I know, I know. I, I don't even want to – yeah, I'm just nervous. <laughs> we're, I don't think we're going to get him, and it makes me so upset and bummed out because that he's a perfect example. He is a blue chip top – you know, he might be the second best in the, in the country. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
or the, the first or second best player in the entire country. So, like, you're going to think that chance of him being a bust is a lot, lot lower than someone else who's a fringe five-star guy, and then there's a bunch of pressure on him, and then you find out he was playing super low-level uh, high school ball. So it's like I only want the – you know, like I remember when Ole Miss got Larry Tunzel or like they got Laquan Treadwell or, um, you know, they had the number Kim one receiver. Dici. Yeah, they had like all the number one guys because Hugh Freeze was down there balling and paying people. Um, but like, yeah, those, like those, those type of blue chip guys, you know what I mean? Like those are – those are the ones that I get. Like they're five stars for a reason. Like there's almost a legit possibility that they're they're not going to be a complete bust. Like they're at least going to come in and like Trey Smith. He was the number one guy in the nation. He was very good for us. You know what I mean? So so it's like those type of guys. Yeah, those are the guys that are the, the can't missers. But like you know, then you ever once in a while you have your um, Chris Donalds of the world, <laughs> which I thought he was going to be incredible growing up. But but anyways, yeah, it's um. You know, so, uh, you know, you like this film, then, hey, sounds good with me. I'm fired up about that. Yeah. So, I, I want you I want you to watch it and then let me know what you think. I will. Do you I agree will. with me or not? Yeah. It's just funny, man, because I don't know, like, what we were talking about, I don't know who's making these kids' films and, and who's putting it in. And, like, you know, is it is it the film? Is it the in-person? Because for me, if I was a coach, I would definitely want to watch film. But like I was saying, when I worked in the recruiting department, Butch Jones and, you know, Jancic and Bajaki and all these guys, like they don't have time to sit and watch everybody. So they're going to watch the top 100s, the blue chip guys who they think they can maybe have a chance on and then in-state people. And then maybe people that they, you know, you bring to a camp. We're going to yeah. bring Kyler Kerbis into the camp and wow, like I kind of like this guy in person. Let me go back and watch his film. You know what I mean? So, um, but uh, anyways, enough with, enough with that. Let's get into some, some, some fun stuff. Uh, I want to hear, and I've heard it, but I want to hear it again. I want the fans here. I want to hear about your, just real quick, just about your recruitment. What what was it like just getting all these phone calls? And like, was it from mainly the head coaches that were calling to offer? Like, how would some of these teams call to offer you? Well, uh, it was always different, uh, yeah. depending. Some wanted me to see, like, wanted to see me first. Uh, like, what, like the, meet, like meet you or like watch you play in person? Uh, no, like meet me. So yeah. I got an offer from Florida because I went down there. Like I got the okay. offer once I went down there. Um, but like Arkansas just sent me a letter and it was just in the mail. Like, here's your offer. <laughs> like, did they, not, even, they, they, did they call? Had they not called you? Uh, no, I don't think so. Like I hadn't really had any communication with their coaches, but it was just like, here's this offer in the, offer. in the mail. So, yeah, like, okay. okay. Uh, so it was, it, it was always different just depending on where I was throughout the recruiting too. Cause in the beginning it was, you know, calling, talking to, and then once I started to get more and more offers, it was just like a, Hey, here you go. If you want it kind of thing. But um sounds pretty lazy. Yeah, exactly. Sounds pretty lazy. I like I didn't understand exactly like when certain teams, you know, would reach out and offer me, but not put that much into recruiting me. I'm like, what is it like? Why are you yeah, wasting well, you're your right. time? Right, right. Like it doesn't make any sense. So uh but yeah, yeah, I mean it was it was a strange time. It was it got very like overwhelming to me and annoying to me just having random phone numbers pop up on my phone and answering. And most of the time it was media. Like it wasn't even coaches that were calling and talking to me as more media guys. Um, but I, I mean, I definitely enjoyed the process. It, it was, it was fun. It was uh, great to be seen as a good player. It was you know, humbling and but yeah, and, it was, yeah. it was humbling, at, you know, at certain points. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was a great process. I'm so glad that, you know, I decided to go to Tennessee and that um, that's where I played because I mean, it just means a lot to me. I've always been a fan there. So just to have, you know, you think back and you're like, I don't even know what would have happened if I didn't have football. Like if I wasn't able to play in college, if I wasn't able to get a scholarship, like, like 
would I have gone to school at UT? Like what, like what would have happened? Like all that kind of stuff. And I, you know, I'm just very blessed that I got this op- that opportunity. Um, and you know, this is why I'm doing this now. That's why I have a podcast about Tennessee football. It's like, because of all those things that happened, you know, because I was genetically six, four, 300 pounds and big hands. It's like, thank goodness. <laughs> yeah. But, um, um, well, now it makes me a little bit worried about some of these offer lists. Cause maybe these guys aren't even watching these guys. I'm like, Oh, well, George offered him. I guess we need to go ahead and throw him one. <laughs> well, that's but, the thing. It's like when it's, when it's the higher ups, like, Georgia, Florida, Bama, USC, Stanford, LSU, Clemson. those guys, like I had all offers from them. They were, ta- they were reaching out. They were talking to me, but like Maryland, Illinois, Cincinnati, UTC, Arkansas, they didn't really talk to me, but they still offered me. Right. But it's like, I think they were just like, oh, let's try and offer them. And then they realized what other offers I had. I was like, ah, like, I don't yeah. think this is going to happen. Right. So. Right. Right. Um, um, okay. Well, I know, like, we all know if we listen to this podcast or we're your friends and family or just listen to you, like, we know you hate Florida. So how did you, how did you end up even considering taking a visit down there without an offer? Well, uh, I wanted the offer. Uh, at that point, it was – I was, you know, commitment was still open. I wasn't committed anywhere. And I wanted to have them as an offer. Just like my mindset at that point was, all right, spread, you know, as much as you can, get as many offers as you can, like, you know, become the bet, like have everything available. So yeah, it's kind of like, it's almost kind of like a, it's kind of like a, an award, like an a, a goal. Like I would, I, if, if I'd been as good as you, I would have been like, listen, I want every freaking school to offer me. Like, it's like, yeah. a, it's like an achievement, like a notch in your belt. Like say like, you know, people say like, yeah, like ultimately I want to get drafted, but being drafted number one overall would be really cool. Well, like, yeah. you know, getting as many offers as you can, you know, it's like you're putting your work in like, Hey, I want to see, you know what I mean? Yeah, so. exactly. So that, so that, that was, that was what it is. It also was, an opportunity for me to really just view everything, see everything, meet the coaches and know if I want to be there because I, it was, it was kind of because I did it all in the same summer. It was kind of like, Hey, I'm going to go and see if I fall in love. If I don't fall in love, like Tennessee is there. Like I know I love, I know I love Tennessee already. So let me just go to these places and see what happens. See if I'm like, oh, yeah, I really like this. So, you know, I went to the Florida camp. Uh, it was like a Friday night lights camp. That's what it was called. And it was it was in the stadium. And uh, we met with Steve Adazio, who people will know him from the just guys being dudes. He's that guy. What's better than this? Guys being dudes. He was the head coach of Boston College when that video came out. He was the offensive line or offensive coordinator at Florida when I was getting recruited. So, if anyone knows um, Ray and Michael, uh, anybody who knows me, friends and family, uh, know them. They will speak their minds. They they don't care to say whatever. Is on their for, mind. for people that don't for people that don't know this would be your your oldest stepbrother and your oldest uh or I mean your oldest you know stepbrother ex stepbrother whatever and then your uh stepfather yes so yeah. um <laughs> we were in that meeting it was me my mom Ray and Michael and I don't even know if I asked a question during the entire thing I think it was <laughs> ju- I think it was just them. And they were firing away at Steve Adazio. Like, what is this? What is he going to look like? What's the offense going to look like? What what position do you think he's going to play? All that kind of stuff. I'm just sitting back listening. Um, and they ask him, well, if you were uh, offered a head coaching job, would you leave? Just straight up, like, would you leave for a head coaching job? And he was like, well, 
there's only a couple teams I would, and they're all in the SEC. So he was just literally like, yeah, I would leave for SEC head coaching job. And they were like, oh, okay. And the next year he was the head coach at Temple. So I think any head coaching job would have done. Um, it was also right. the year that Urban had heart issues and left. So the entire staff had to find new jobs. But uh, I always thought that was funny. He's like, oh, I'd only go to SEC school. Did you meet with Urban? I did not meet with Urban, no. No, I didn't meet okay. with him. Okay. Um, which was like – What did they, what did Steve try to say? Like, where are they going to – where was he wanting to play you? What, what kind of like ego stroking was he saying? Or was he like, no, you got to come here, earn it, or like what? No, nah, he was definitely um, – open i think he said that most likely a guard uh yeah. but he was like we'll definitely just have to see what it's like once he gets here and all that kind of stuff um and like like people can imagine steven dazio is very just like no nonsense i want dudes that work really hard and put in a lot of effort and are you know mean and shit like like that's that's who he is so it was it was he he liked me a lot I'll just I'll just say that like he liked me a lot because I fit that realm of of an offensive lineman that that he would want um did but you yeah. like go ahead. go ahead I was just gonna ask, ask another question did you was there anything about Florida that you liked um and, and how did you perform at the camp well, um, there wasn't really anything that I truly was like, ooh, this is cool. Um, I performed well at the camp. I had my highest vertical I ever tested at 29 inches. Um, they, it was a camp where they were like, bring your helmet and shoulder pads. But then I was the only offensive lineman who had shoulder pads. Uh, so, like, Did you I, wear them? <laughs> There, there, there was a drill. It was like a board drill, just like driving each other. And I was the only one with shoulder pads and a lot of the other defensive linemen had them. And he's like, all right, go ahead. And I literally had to go against like 10 defensive linemen in a row. I'm what like, all, this so dude. all these other offensive linemen, they just don't have shoulder pads. Yeah. They just brought helmets. They just didn't bring so they shoulder didn't, pads. So, so they didn't participate in that one. Yeah. So they didn't participate in that one. So I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, what the heck am I supposed to do here, man? Like, I got to go against all these guys. And I it, it felt more like a they're testing me to see what kind yeah. of guy, like what kind of player I am. Um, so I was just like, all right, screw it. Like, I'll do whatever I need to do. Um, but yeah, I think I think that whole trip like really made me understand, like, I don't want to come here because of the who Steven Adazio was, how, you know, what he said about leaving, all that kind of thing. You know, once I got out there, him, you know, putting me through these drills and like trying to like test me of some sort. And I'm like, bro, I, I'm a four star. I've got 20 offers. Like, why are you trying to test me right now? Like, you know that I can do this. This isn't, I don't know. I just got like a bad taste in my mouth from that. Um, and was, then, were, 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 were you like the main offensive, like were you one of two, three or four main offensive linemen they were talking with and stuff like that? Yeah. Because I, I remember Marcus Jackson was there too. Yeah. And we both ended up going to Tennessee, but Marcus is uh, from Florida. Um, so it was, yeah, I, I, I just felt like he was like really trying to test me and my skill and, and, and my like competition and like my push through drills. Like, am I tired? Will I keep pushing? I'm like, this is not, this is not that. Like I didn't come here for that. Like you should know what kind of player I am by now. It, it, it just kind of annoyed me. Right. Um, to an extent. And then, you know, like you asked before, like I didn't get to meet with urban at all. 
And that kind of put a bad taste in my mouth. Like, I'm not even going to meet the head coach. Like, I understand there's a lot going on, but I'm not even going to meet him. But then it's like, oh, it, he was out the door. Like, he left before the next season started, you know, finished that 2010 season. But then he, he left. And uh, so I was just like, yeah, I, th- this isn't it. Like, I left and was like, no, nah, like, I definitely don't want to play here at all. So, um. Did you get any, like, you know how they do, like, they put on the jerseys, they all have pictures with the head coaches, they all do, like, these – I mean, was there anything like that? No. No, there was nothing like that. And – um So you didn't even get a picture with, like, a Steve, like, whatever or anything like that? No. Just no. shake his hand, say thanks, all that? And- yeah, just shook his hand, had a meeting with him and the guy who was, re- who was recruiting me. He was uh, – like special teams coach. He just had like right. Tennessee, like that was his right. region. So yeah, just had a meeting with them before the camp started. Um, like they took us around the stadium. Facility. Yeah. The facility and stuff like that had a meeting with them and then um, like went down and did like testing after everybody had already tested. So it was like, this was a front, like this was a camp for the best recruits. Um, but like, I wasn't with all the other campers, you know what I mean? Like I was separated from them. Like they had already done the regular, like testing of like a vert. So you felt like more of a stuff. priority then. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely yeah. felt like more of a priority than just like regular campers there. Yeah. Um, and I did the same thing at Tennessee. I went to a camp at Tennessee and was more of a priority than the other campers. Like there was a break midway through the camp when I was at Tennessee and me and coach, he went and watched film together. And we even like, were in there longer than we we're supposed to be. And like came out, you know, 45 minutes late to the second half of camp. So yes, I definitely felt like I was more of a priority than some of the other campers, which was good, but there was nothing that was keeping me there. Okay. I'll say that. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, but that, and that was, was that a, that was an official or unofficial? No, it was unofficial. Yeah. Um, that's what I thought. Yeah. yeah Cause you're only a fit. Your only official visit was Tennessee. Yes, exactly. Right. Okay. All right. Now so let's go to, let's go to the old Bama. I got, I, I love hearing about you meeting with Nick Saban and how yeah. everything went in Bama. Yeah, so uh, that that was good too. Uh, it was I was definitely, you know, treated differently than some of the other campers because it was a camp. Um, you know, there's like this long line of of kids. Like once you sign up, then you get in line, and the line leads to Coach Saban, and you get a picture with him. Um, and I remember like being walked over to Coach Saban in front of this huge line to get the picture and then walked away. Like I was with other coaches and they came, like I skipped the entire line and shook hands with them and then walked away. Cause he still had to shake a bunch of people's hands. Yeah. Because this isn't just the, this isn't just one of those camps where like they're inviting people. Like this is like some kid like me, who's never going to play at Alabama can go to the camp to like try to showcase my town, ta- all that garbage. Yeah. If you want right, to. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah, um, okay. That Friday night, the one in Florida was more of an invite as okay. camp. Um, okay. But so, yeah, like did that, then, you know, did the camp. The meeting with Saban wasn't until after the camp. But I remember like doing the camp and I'll never forget this. I, I had a I had a very vertical set, so I set straight back. Um, and different offensive linemen have different sets. Uh, can play it differently. And if, if you're able to watch the game more, or watch offensive linemen more, you'll see that. Like Joe Thomas, who, you know, played for the Cleveland Browns forever, does not pass set the same as Tyron Smith, who's the tackle for Dallas. They're both left tackles, but they set completely differently because they found their technique, what works for them. I was more of a Joe Thomas set. I set vertical. I set straight back. It just helped me with distance. I wasn't as fast as some of the defensive ends. So that's what I liked. And I remember doing, you know, doing one-on-ones, doing those drills and doing fine. And then a coach being like, 
you're not setting right. I need you to set out more of an angle, like not so much vertical. And I'm thinking, what are you talking? This is perfect for me. It keeps my hips square. You know, it works for me. It's like, I need you to set out, like getting on to me almost. He was like an assistant O-line coach. I'm like, okay. So next one comes up. I set out. Guy immediately just does a swim inside. And yeah. Meets me inside. I'm yeah. like, yeah, what? Like, I understand you want this angle set like Tyron Smith does. He does more of an angle set, but it's like, this doesn't fit my game. This isn't who I am. Like, certain people set in certain ways, certain people put their hands. You, you never said, like, you never. No, I, I didn't say that to him. I didn't explain that to him because, you know, I'm a 17 year old kid, 16 no, I know, probably what, at this point. What I was going to ask is, did you ever say, go over and like look at him after that or be like, or did he say anything to you after you got beat? Like, because, you know, some coaches might be like, hey, you did a good job. He, he beat you inside, but hey, you did a good job there. Or the loser coaches are still like, hey, yeah, way to go. You got beat. And it's like, well, thanks, guy. Yeah, no, I, I think I think I kind of like looked at him. Like, yeah, that was that was what was going to happen if you tell me to set out. And I think he kind of like rolled his eyes or whatever. I'm like, whatever, dude. Like, I do not yeah. care what you have to say. Um, and then the offensive line coach that was there was Coach Pendry. Uh, he was about 85 years old, could barely walk, was riding around in a golf cart. And he retired the next year. So – that kind of made me feel better of being like, I, like I wouldn't even know who was going to coach me when I went. Um, but yeah, camp was fine. Uh, then got to meet with coach Saban afterwards, you know, after looking through the facility and stuff like that, sat down with him, and, you know, same kind of things where Ray, Ray and Michael were there and they're asking their questions uh, all that kind of stuff. I'm not really saying much, but you know, the way he did it, you know, we're sitting in his office, he's got trophies everywhere and he's got this little like seating area of chairs and a couch around this coffee table. That's, you know, separate from his desk and on the coffee table is every single ring that he's ever won in, in, in like a box, just every single one just to show out, Hey, look right. at me, look what I've done, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, I mean, he was just blatant up front about like, like, I don't need you to come here. Like what, like, why, why, why should I have you come here? Oh, are you even going to come here? Are you not just, Wait, he would, he would say that stuff. Yeah. Like, why should I, why should I recruit you if you're from Knoxville and Tennessee has offered you? Like, are you not wow. just going to Tennessee? What'd you say to that? What'd, uh, what'd, you say, what'd you say to that? You know, I'm a 17-year-old. Like, I didn't really exactly understand what to say because at this point, I hadn't necessarily made up my mind that I wanted to go to Tennessee. It was definitely yeah. in the top. Um, and I, at the moment, was like, I want to keep my commitment open because I want – to know that, you know, I have no regrets on yeah. just choosing Tennessee just to choose them. So that's kind of what I said. Like, I don't want to have any regrets looking back or anything like that. Like I, I am still open and, you know, that's the reason I came down here is because I wanted to see if I'd fall in love with it and see if this is a place for me. So, um, he was like, okay, I, I can't remember exactly what he said because uh, it was so long ago. Now, like, you know, 11 years. But I remember that being the gist of it. Like, why should I put effort into recruiting you if you're going to go to Tennessee? And then also, like, a, I can find whoever I need to find. Like, we're going to be okay. You know, what can you bring to the table? Uh, so I, I just didn't, I didn't feel loved at that point, which, Hey, that's Nick Saban's prerogative. He can do it how he wants to do it. He can recruit how he wants to recruit. Uh, he's obviously done a very good job at it. 
and done a very good job at building teams and winning championships. So, you know, can't knock him for it. But at that moment, that's what I wanted was showing a little bit of love, wanting me to come there. And since I didn't get that, I was like, okay, like good to know that I went down there and at least tried and just, it wasn't it. Like, it just wasn't it. He isn't Did, the guy. Wasn't that there I wasn't there a part though where wasn't there a part though that you told me where Ray, uh, Ray and Michael were asking questions and he looks at him and says, "Hey, like stop! Like I'm talking to Kyler right now or something like that." Yes, yes, that definitely happens. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> where, like you said, they I mean they would just ask questions over and over, um, but then they'd start to like answer questions that he would ask uh like what like what are you looking for in a team what are you looking for in a coach what what why would you want to come here you know uh all those kind of things and like ray and michael would be like well you know he's keeping his options open and he's just like i'm trying to talk to kyler right now i'm trying to have a conversation with him so i don't know if that maybe uh got on Saban's nerves and he was like, you know, turned into the, why should I have you here? Why should I recruit you kind of thing? But, right. But who right. knows that that might've been part of it. Um, but I, I, let I, me say this, go ahead. Let me say this. So I, I, I met Saban one time, um, a girl I used to date, you know, her brother played there. I went down for the, it was his senior year, the year they actually won the championship in 09. And before the year started, we went down for the A game, the spring game, and they have like a family uh, barbecue after. So it was like you're at the facility, only people there are players and their families. And so I went and met him, and it was so funny because I went to like shake his hand, like just get a picture with him and whatever. And at the time, like he wasn't like he was Nick Saban, he was good, but he was also you know, he was just like all the other big name coaches. He was like an urban. He was like, yeah. you know, um, I'm trying to think of some of those guys, but like, hell, like a Charlie Weiss back then who had a big name, like, you know, just these guys, he wasn't what he is now, which in my opinion is the greatest college football coach of all time. Uh, like I said, my opinion, but like he was still kind of a big deal, but dude, there was like a legit aura about him because he is a tiny guy. Like I was a senior in high school, you know, 6'1", 185 pounds. And I, like, was a monster compared to him. Yeah. And so it was so funny. But I, I, I wish I could explain it to people. But he was, like, at the barbecue and families are eating and just hanging out. And, like, some people would kind of go up and talk with him, shake his hand, or maybe he'd go over and just, hey, how's it going? How's... But he was just, like, kind of off and kind of doing his pol politician thing, like trying to see so many people. But I swear to you, like, there was like this little bit of like aura around him. Like it, it was almost like he was like perfectly tan hair back makeup on. Like it was almost like he, like it, it was weird. Like it was, and this is before, <laughs> like this, I'm a Tennessee fan. Like I didn't really care. Like I didn't, it wasn't like I put him on some pedal stool. So it was like, it just made me feel that way. Like I was a Tennessee fan. Like, you know, I enjoyed being there and seeing all these players and the experience. And I knew I wanted to play college football, but like, I mean, it wasn't, it was just like he was Nick Saban. He was the head football coach. But, like, it was just something different about that guy, bro. Like, the intimidation yeah. factor. He was like our own – our old football high school coach, Mark Pemberton, who just was such an intimidating guy. A great guy, a nice guy. Was was very nice and great to me. But, like, he was just intimidating. And I feel like coaches need a little bit of that in there. Like, some of that intimidation, a little bit of respect, scaredness. Um, but it was funny meeting Nick. Like, it was, it was weird. It was like – it's kind of like he was a movie character or something like in real life. Um, but let me reflect on it. It's funny hearing you say this because I know now as 28 year old or 29 year old Kyler, we get annoyed with these guys, these recruits that want the love, that want all the love, that want all the attention, but you didn't know any different at 16 and 17. You started balling out. You started telling everyone, telling you how great you were. You wanted all these calls and you go down to Florida and Steve might be like, all right, this is a kid from a private school, decent size, not big time, not big time high school football. 
he's got some good offers. He's got some good size. Like, let me see if he's really about that, about that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so then, but you're like, dang, like, why are you putting me through this? Like, I'm a four star. Like, I got all these offers. Like, I don't need you. But like, you know what I mean? And so he's like, well, I want to see if you're really about that or if you're just up there playing a bunch of, you know, of the private school kids that are 220 pounds and you're just bigger than them and you can just muscle them around. And then it's like Nick Saban's right. Like, you know, no offense. He doesn't need Kyle Kerbson. He doesn't need anybody. Like he knows it's about a team and he's going to have plenty of people to come there and work hard. But it's just it's funny to hear because, like, I know you're not a cocky guy. Like you're a humble guy and, you know, don't have an ego and stuff like that. But it's just like just how recruits are, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like recruits want to feel like they're super loved at places. And I do like the coaches that can show them some love. And like, I feel like if I was a coach, I'm like, Hey, we really want you here. I really like your game, but I promise you nothing's going to be given to you. Like you're still going to have to come here and earn something, you know, kind of like that balance of hopefully being honest with them. Yeah, I agree. I, I, it's, it's exactly what you said. Like, you think these cr- recruits might be a little outlandish, like wanting so much love and getting so much attention and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, sometimes you go there, it's like, I, like I'm a senior now. I have earned these stars that I have. I've played good ball and you're treating me like a freshman again. Like you're treating me like, right. I got to go through the ringer. And at that point you're like, what? why are you doing this? Like, I'm not a freshman. Like I don't need to be tested. Right. Uh, Like I'm the leader on my team back home. Right. Like, why are you trying to test me? But you know, hindsight's 2020. When you look back on it, it's like, yeah, I would want to do the same thing. Like if I was a coach, I would want to do the same thing and be like, okay, what is this guy made of? Um, What can I actually get out of him? And it makes sense. And like you said, I do think it is a very good thing to have a little bit of fear uh, of a head coach where it's like I am a little nervous to go to his his office, you know, and a lot like a lot of coaches like, yeah, I got the open door policy. You can come and talk to me whenever all that kind of stuff. But I, I feel like having that little bit of fear, having that little bit of uh apprehension and just so much respect towards the head coaches is, is makes a big difference. Yeah. Like the I guys agree. that the guys that play at Alabama are very uh you know endorsing of of Nick Saban and and who he is as a coach, who he is as a guy. You know, guys that have left, you know, gone to the NFL, they say they love Coach Saban. But you know, I guarantee throughout their entire time, it was like, don't get in his way. Don't make him upset. Make sure that he's happy. Yeah. Like, don't disappoint him. That was the motivational factor of it is being like, I know for a fact. I mean, I, I know need for to, a fact. I need to do what I need to do so that Coach Saban is happy. <laughs> I, yeah, I know for a fact that it didn't matter who you were on that Bama team, like, Cause I talked, I would ask the, you know, I would ask the, the, the brother of the girl I was dating and I would hear about it. And I was around the other players and like, bro, like it was, they didn't want to let him down. Like, and they knew like if they did mess up and he couldn't trust him on the field, someone else was going to play. Like, you know what I mean? And so they wanted to be out there. They wanted to play. And um, it was that good level of respect. And um, I would always thought it was really funny when they told me a story about at the end of the year, they have their meetings with him and just how like efficient and how like uh, dedicated he is and his discipline, like he would bring every player in at the end of the year on the team and he'd give them 15 minutes. And when your 15 minutes was up, it doesn't matter where you were talking about, where you were in the conversation, nothing. It was, it was over because he had to get to the next person. And it was like, you would think like, and when I first heard that, I was like, well, dang, that's kind of brutal. Like, you know, I'm like, what if, you know, what if Mark Ingram's coming in there and he's talking to him? What about if it's, you know, one of his best defensive linemen or Dante Hightower or whatever, like he can't give him an extra minute, but like, no, like he sticks to it. You come in, you, he gives you an opportunity to talk how you feel like you played in about the season that he wants to tell you kind of what he thought maybe talk to you about what's going on, you know, in the next season. And then it's next to the next person. You know what I mean? It's just like that regimented, he treats everyone the same. 
you know your opportunity, you know where you're staying with him. It's just impressive. So I always just thought it was fascinating, thought it was so funny to hear that he's asking you questions and Ray and Michael are trying to answer for you. And he's just like, hey, like, I want to talk to Kyler. Like, I'm not, yeah. I don't want to ask you guys. And, yeah. and honestly, those coaches probably get so tired of dealing with family members and handlers and all this other nonsense. Oh, because so. they, that's, that's their, that's their five minutes. That's their 10 minutes of fame. They know that they have something he wants and he's quickly going to tell you like, well, yeah, I want Kyler, but I don't need him. I don't have to have him. You know what I mean? So like, go, like you said, like he almost pulls out his, his BDE, his, uh, <laughs> yeah. his big, you know, his big, his big ego energy. And it's like, Hey, like, I don't need you. So like go park it at the door. Yeah. You know? it's so, uh, But my mom always tells a story about coach Cheney because he was recruiting me at Tennessee and, uh, he was like, um, you know, I want Kyler to come here. I love him. I, I think he's going to be great for us. And, like, talk to my mom about that. He's like, but I just want you to know, I'm going to lose your number once he comes here. Like, Yeah, I love that. I'm not yeah. going to talk to you anymore. And she always thought that was so funny. And, like, you know, saw him, like, a year later or whatever at a game or something like that. And she was like, I guess you really did lose my number. He's like, yep because they hadn't talked since then. It was just like a funny like joke, but like, they're not, they're not trying to put up with parents and. Right. Yeah. It's absurd. Yeah. It's, 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 you, you wouldn't call, <laughs> you wouldn't call your kid's boss who works at TCBY as a parent. And be like, <laughs> why, aren't you treat, why aren't you giving him shift hours? Oh, like, Hey, guess what? He earns his hours. Like, right. No one. Right. God, I would crush TCBY right now. Why did you <laughs> say that? I freaking love it. All right. Well, good. Well, good stuff. I mean, I, I enjoy, I hope people like hearing about that. Like, you know, you going down there and kind of what the experience was like and, you know, kind of, you know, your thoughts and stuff. And, uh, you know, next week, hopefully we'll hear about, you know, going to Duke. Cause if people remember, like you were pretty high on Duke and, yes. you know, going down there and meet with cut, and then uh, obviously then why you ended up choosing Tennessee and stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I can't wait. Duke was Duke was number two on my list. I mean, yeah. with, even with all the offers that I had, that I mentioned earlier, like they were very close second. So it was, yeah. a, it was a great visit when I actually did go up there. Cool. But right, uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys um, watching and listening. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, uh, let your friends and family know what's going on here, what we got going and, uh, you know, spread, spread as much as you can. Um, we're presented by betonline.ag. So if you're making any bets, uh, baseball, is really the big sport going on. Might be some in the Olympics. I don't know. Uh, just go over there and check that out. If you're looking to contact us, got an email, believe in Tennessee football at gmail.com and have a phone number 865 322 9232. So uh, get to us there. Let us know what you think, topics you might want us to touch on. And, you know, also comment section, you know, leave comments, uh, ask me questions, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram at Kyler Kerberson. So be happy to answer that. Uh, and yeah, as always, go balls.